It's okay. We can just uh, we can just sing it in our heads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to the Team Rocket podcast. My name's Jesse. And I'm James. And uh, we're blasting off blasting into off. this episode of uh, the podcast. What episode is this? Uh, 23. Mm. 23. That's the one. Well. <laughs> I just woke shout up. Shout out to Michael Jordan. Oh, yeah. Shout out to what? Oh, shout Jordan. Out to, shout out to LeBron James. <laughs> I, when you said Michael Jordan, you know, I thought of Michael B. Jordan. I'm just like, Creed? <laughs> Oh shit! That movie's coming out soon. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, Creed three. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Ugh. <sighs> Dude, I'm like, I have such like fucking major brain fog right now. I was so half asleep. <laughs> Fuck. Oh my god. Um, what are you doing today? Today. We're going to be doing some more Reddit threads because that was pretty fun. Uh, yeah, that was interesting. Interesting. Uh, we're still doing Am I the Asshole, right? Yeah. 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 Just, so we'll call this Am I the Asshole Part 2, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, fuck. I can't even think, yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. I think Babington fucked me up good, yeah. That I, I don't know what happened yesterday, but it took everything out, yeah. It took everything out of me, yeah. My legs are still like this, Because you're too yeah. good, yeah. Yo. yo, what are you talking about, yeah? Shoo, 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 yo, shoo. You, were, you were the one doing those uh, <clears throat> those drop shots, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, Taylor was doing uh, some nasty drop shots, yo. Oh, those, yeah. <laughs> you two were, were fighting it out, yeah. It was like a uh, dual this entry, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Oh, you know what? You know what killed me, yo? Your fucking sound effects at the last round, yo. <laughs> I died, yo. It's just like, oh my god. I couldn't breathe, yo. I'd hit it, and then, like, I'd, like, I'd breathe out, and then you'd hit it. And then I couldn't breathe in because I started <laughs> laughing because of you, yo. And I'm like, oh, oh my god. <laughs> I have abs now because of you. Thank you. I, I know what you were doing that, yeah. You did it for me, yeah. Yeah, yeah. For, yeah. Uh, uh, for, the, some, for your workout, yeah. For know. the six pack, yeah. It was already there. I just, uh, I brought them to the surface. Brought them to the surface? Sample, sample for the, sample for the audience. Oh, that's Patreon shit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. Uh, anyway. Uh, shall we start the uh, Reddit threads, yeah? Sure. Let's just hop, hop right into it, yeah. I only have one brain cell today. Holy shit. I like your shirt. What does it say? Where's my honey? Oh, what the? Stephanie Sue merch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. damn. That's cute, yeah. Shout out to Stephanie Sue, yeah. yeah shout, outs, shout outs to the yellow vibes, yeah. The yellow. Oh, word. I totally planned <laughs> that. Totally planned that. Yeah, Stephanie Sue, hope you watch the, 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 the podcast. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be pretty dope, actually. Uh, so let's do a mukbang together, yo. Word. <laughs> or a uh, haunted house scary haunted house. <laughs> haunted story, house. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, that, uh, do the we'll do like a true crime uh, video. I mean, those are also part of her mukbangs. Like where she does a... Uh, she eats and talks about Yeah, true she crime. tells like a story of like a true crime or like a, a, f- a science fiction model uh, novel. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yo, we should do some mukbangs on here too, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let us know if you want to see a mukbang on Team Rocket Pod, yeah. I'd, I'd love to. I'm always hungry whenever we record these things, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. We could do that maybe like when, if we have like a table that's about chair height. Yeah. With like mic stands. Yeah, instead of... Because I can't, uh, cause I can't uh, eat and uh, hold the mic <laughs> at the same the time. Mic, yeah. I mean, maybe, but then it would be pretty chaotic. Oh, for sure, I yeah. might get like rice on my on the mic. Dude, I'm gonna get like grease all over the thing. You know, it's gonna be like slipping out of my <laughs> hand. You know, oh my god. Yeah, I'm mean, gonna get an actual table, not a stool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's get those uh, Reddit threads going. Yeah. All right. Um, this post. Um, the title is called "Am I the asshole for throwing out a girl's present?" Uh, for me in the trash and calling her a creepy bitch. Um, the post reads, 
I, uh, eighteen year old male, I'm a senior in high school, and this creepy girl, female, eighteen, has been following me around for the past few months. I've caught her recording me multiple times, and in one of my friend, and one of my friends showed me this entire invasive Tumblr page she made of edited pictures of me, and her as a couple. I've tried confronting her before and telling her to stop following me around, but she always scampers off when I. St- start talking to her and telling her off. I had to block her on various social medias after she sent me a detailed DMs about her weird fantasies of me. Oh. I've tried re- reporting her to my dean with with her DMs but he's completely useless and my parents don't care at all that about uh how she's creeping me out. They think she th- she th- they think I should be flattered. Uh, a few weeks ago, she came up to me with this small box of cupcakes during lunch. Now, I know she ditched class to come stalk me and find out which cafeteria space I was sitting in for lunch because my friend has physics class with her during my lunch period. Uh, I was extremely pissed off that she was approaching me again, so I told her I didn't want her gift and to leave me alone. She kept mumbling, sorry, but tried to force the box into my hands or lap. I finally stopped resisting, and as soon as she backed off, I said, Jesus, you creepy bitch. (laughs) Took the cupcake box to the nearest garbage can and shook it empty into the bin and chucked the box in too. She started crying and ran off. My friends were half laughing at the situation and half calling me a savage and heartless. However, one of my friends texted me later, and she said my reaction was extremely cruel and uncalled for. Am I the asshole? Damn. <sighs> <laughs> Jesus, you creepy bitch. <laughs> yeah, that that killed. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy. I'd be fed up too. Mm-hmm. I think. <clears throat> mm. Like. Yeah, I feel like it's like edited pictures mm-hmm. on a public page. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, that's. I feel like that's like some sort of harassment or something <laughs> at that point. Because then. Um, oh, that's weird, yo. And it's almost like he's a celebrity. Oh, like, yeah. You know how be like people can be like that online with celebrities? Like, that's be true. obsessed with them. And, like, I guess it's, you don't hear it as often or it's not as expected for regular people. I mean, it's not as expected for celebrities to react in that kind of way to their numerous friends, numerous fans. Yeah. As opposed to regular people that you don't really hear it as much, especially, like, from, like, a a guy's perspective. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. What do you think about that reaction, though? though? <clears throat> That's. I mean, for me, like when you take it in, like, I'm imagining him like walking around. He's just like, after his like class is over, he knows he has like some time, so he goes to the washroom, walks out of the washroom. The girl's like behind on the corner of like the hallway with the camera, like, out, with the yeah. camera, like. <laughs> and then he's like, "Fuck, man!" We're trying to walk away. He goes somewhere else, and she's. Uh, peeping around through a window or yeah. something and the fact that he's already tried to tell her to yeah. like you know like hey no <laughs> oh man like I, it's months he said this has been happening for months stop i wouldn't be able to last that long you know? oh. i would have swung by now like, he's talked to his parents who said dean. oh you should be flattered like, uh, uh yeah i mean sure maybe he's a cute guy or maybe he's not cute and just her type right yeah but there's, there's and he's, limits yeah to he's shit, talked yeah. to the dean too and yeah. he can't he's not very helpful so it's like yeah his friends know what's up too like mm-hmm. they're literally like warning him mm-hmm. and like if i can trying to keep tabs on her too like like he and how his friend knows that uh she's in his class mm-hmm. so then he has like a free like free time to like uh, have his own time <laughs> during the spare you know? but apparently not because she skipped class for cupcakes <laughs> but I mean, I can see why it would be like 
like maybe from her perspective she's trying to like win him over like oh uh i care about him so much but i'm willing to to wait until he's ready (laughs) (laughs) you know (laughs) she's like oh these cupcakes will do i don't even know if they're like cupcakes that he liked or whatever (laughs) i have these cupcakes here Here's the cupcakes. Why does she sound Filipino, yo? <laughs> Fresh off the boat, yo. <laughs> Maybe she is. I don't know. Oh, man. <laughs> then he takes the cupcakes. He's like, what the fuck? Puts them in the garbage. He's like, I don't want your fucking cupcakes. <laughs> Jesus, you creepy bitch. And he, did, he, like, he did start off with that. He tried to be nice. He's just like, look, I don't yeah. want these. Can yeah. you please stop? And then she kept insisting. She, she, she kept pushing she you. Push. <laughs> Dude, if you, put, you, you poke, if you poke the lion, yo... You're gonna get Claudia. <laughs> so, like, am I the ha- asshole? Um, or is he the asshole? <clears throat> Jesus, you creepy bitches. <laughs> <laughs> the explosion of emotion, I understand. Could he have toned it down maybe a little bit? Maybe. But I don't, I don't think it deems him to be the asshole, yo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you think? No, I don't. I don't think he was the asshole for that because, like, he's tried all different ways. Yeah, and that was uh, she can't. She clearly couldn't, couldn't take get, the hint. Yeah, so you, she's willing to put in that work to change him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I thought of someone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like sometimes you, some people don't have like the what's that word? Emotional intelligence or the social uh, IQ. IQ to tell when someone isn't interested vibe, interested in you or they don't want to vibe with you as like even like as a on a friendship level. Yeah. So I can see why uh, she could take it really personally because it was like a big ge- in her eyes just like a big gesture like oh what I've been doing hasn't been working me stalking and taking photos of him and posting them online whether anybody else sees it or not hasn't been working so <laughs> maybe these cupcakes will do that <laughs> right <laughs> oh, these and cupcakes like, will <laughs> I can't I can't <laughs> These cupcakes, once the he puts it in his mouth, it will change him. <laughs> it will change his heart. His hardened heart and make him hardened only for me. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. It would be a completely different story if he ate the cupcake, yeah. Mm-hmm. Completely different. Maybe, maybe, like, maybe, like, throw throw them out, like, grab one, take a bite out of it, and if it's good, then we're like, I don't know, you keep them, you know? But also, you don't want to give her... Like from his perspective, you don't want to give her the satisfaction of like, like, oh, that's okay. oh, he accepted the gift. This is this behavior is all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. And like for her, it's like, oh, I I did this big gesture, and um, he kind of did something that was like, sh- like I I I made the cupcakes. It's a big thing for me to try, kind of a last ditch effort because nothing's been working. But um, for me to take the courage to take this step into doing this for him and for him to kind of take all of my hard work and effort and love and throw it in the garbage in front of me and then call me a creepy bitch. It breaks my heart. <laughs> like I can kind of see that perspective too. Yeah. But it's like, it was like you every months of just, you not getting the hint. Yeah. Like you didn't like he tried the, he tried the nice way. And the only other way left you was the savage one, you. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, yeah, it's just she didn't, she couldn't see the message the first time, you know. So, mm-hmm. like, would she have rather him, like, be nice and like, just play like, around later like, on, later on, like unintentionally, yeah, but not outright be rejectful like that. Mm-hmm. Like that kind of makes. Uh, that I th- I feel like that would kind of make him the asshole, even if like he doesn't feel the same way. Yeah, because it's just like you, she, she, th- you know, she thinks this thing, but um, you're kind of like using it to your advantage, mm-hmm. type of thing. So it's just like 
that that would be more of an asshole thing than to be like, Jesus, you creepy bitch. <laughs> Jesus, you creepy bitch. Damn. Oh God. I like yeah. I don't. I don't blame him for doing that, and I could see why she would also be upset. Yeah. But I think his his reaction emotional was, outburst was valid. Yeah, this was warranted <clears throat> for sure. Her uh, maybe she's learned since then. I hope so. <laughs> That's. But who knows, yo? Stuff you <clears throat> editing photos, man. <laughs> Make it. Not the photo editing to make that's, them look like a couple of you. That's, that's tough. That's tough, yo. I feel like, like everything else I could like kind of brush off and kind of <clears> like, <throat> what's it called? Well, the photo taking would be like annoying, but it's just like when you start using that and like making things look like different things online, yo, that's, that's it, yo. Yeah. Yeah, that's creepy, yo. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, I feel like it's one thing for it to be, like, an appreciation type post, like, mm. even though it's, like, kind of obsessive. Yeah. Like, creating, like, collages or whatever. But, like, if you're, yeah, you're changing the narrative to make it seem like you guys are a thing, thing. Then that's, like... It's like, hey, oh, yeah. right. Stop <clears> that, yo. <laughs> oh. Any updates on that thread, yo, from him, or... Well, she's mm. just like tormenting him now. It's like, okay. Let's see. Mm. One person said, uh, uh, not the asshole. You should honestly take all the DMs and Tumblr to the cops. And someone else said, uh, uh, the. The one who the guy who posted it said, "Would her actions be considered illegal? And is there a l- legitimate chance she actually would be punished?" <laughs> uh, fuck. Someone else said, uh, "Yes, two unwanted contacts is legally stalking if you are in the U.S. and ask for a restraining order, mm. but not everywhere in the U.S." Interesting. Damn. Hmm. Dude, when you said the, I could change him. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, um, it might be old news, but not every relationship you have in your life are are you obligated to be the the savior. Bob the builder of the relationship. Yeah, you're not so you don't have to save anyone, yo. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> We get being a hero, but you're you're not the hero yet. You don't have to be the hero. Yeah, you're not. You're. It's not. It's not your job to to save, save people. or change or hold out hope that they're gonna be that they're not the person that they're showing themselves to be. Right. Yep. Like if you if you have to save anyone anyone in your lifetime, yo, save yourself, yo. Mm-hmm. Start with that. Yeah. If you can't save yourself, yeah, what the fuck do you think you can, you're doing trying to save someone else? Yeah. Yeah. You know that. Uh, you know that uh, idea of like looking for, like, uh, red flags, or like not looking for them, but like being aware of them. Yeah. It's like some people don't purposely. Ig- some people purposely ignore red, red flags, flags, or they see all flags as green flags. No, they see the red flag, yeah, and they're like, oh. I could, I can turn this to a green flag. Yeah, this can be a green flag. Yeah. This this red flag, that's okay. It's there, yeah, because I can change it. I can, I can paint it. the flag, yeah. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> no. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can't say names, yeah. We can't say yeah, names. Uh, yeah, that's tough. Red flags, man. Red yeah. flags, yeah. If uh, if if it like I I th- I, fi- I think it's uh underrated. Sometimes uh, Red us, flags Yeah No like us <laughs> listening to like Our guts Like if you have a bad oh, gut feeling sure. If someone gives you a bad gut feeling With a way they treat you Yeah I think that's like a uh, Dare I say Primal instinct Instinct mm. Of our bodies Telling us like The f- fight Some, or flight Like oh there's There's something there's, jan- there's danger with how you're being treated Yeah So like if someone gives you sometimes some 
the X. The X. Sometimes the X are for our real, yo. Yeah. And sometimes maybe you're just being too picky, right? Hey, man. Like, but if you're not picky enough, then <laughs> then that's that's also that's also tough. Yeah. Yeah. Like fucking, yeah. Like gut feeling, yo. Like even even if it is like too picky there's still something that's triggering it so mm-hmm. at the very least like find out what that is mm-hmm. and then maybe you find out you're too picky then then you go from there but mm-hmm. like if you have a good feeling and you find out it's because of this red flag you because it's it's you don't kind of have a gut feeling for no reason yeah yeah if something's going to trigger it at least at the very least find out what it is mm-hmm. and then go from there yeah and that, yeah. and it's not to say that Everybody you share a relationship with should only be green flags to you. No, but it's like. But just at least acknowledge the red flags. Yeah, yeah. And if like the red flags are things that directly affect you, then then consider trying to work that out. Exactly. But at the same time, uh, <coughs> a movie that I that I watched a long time ago. Called the perks of being a wallflower, which is uh, pretty good. It has a uh, oh. Logan Lerman and uh, Emma Watson and Paul Rudd in it. Okay. Uh, uh, the teacher Paul Rudd, he says, I'm pretty sure it's Paul Rudd. Like I'm like ninety percent sure. He yeah. said, um, uh, a lot of the time we accept the love we think we deserve. So it's like, oh, what the fuck. So it's like, oh, why is this? Why is this girl who seems to be everything I'm looking for with this douchebag guy, you know? Or like, why is this? Why is this guy with this bitch of a girlfriend? Yeah. When he deserve when when these people deserve so much more than that, right? But it's like, for these for some of these people and a lot of us, <clears throat> whether it's in a relationship standpoint, like an intimate standpoint, familiar standpoint, or like just a, like on a platonic standpoint. We accept, we accept, we accept the love that we're given based off of like how we see ourselves and mm. we think that we should be treated, or like what we think we deserve type of yeah. thing. Yeah. So like if I if I don't think that I deserve to be treated At with the, things the that are healthy, yeah. then it's like I'll be, I'll, I'll I'm willing to accept being treated shitty, oh. because that's like how I see myself and that's how like oh that's normal whether it's like part of their upbringing. With how yeah. people have treated them, like people role models in their life, oh you shit, know? or like relationships that they see as model relationships, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so like, I always think about that. I'm like, dang, why is this dude allowing himself to be treated that way? Or is like, why is this girl allowing herself to be treated that way? Whether, whether whatever the dynamic of the relationship is, is like it's crazy to see how far. Uh, people and our we are allow we allow ourselves to be treated mm-hmm. based off of like how we see ourselves like it's like a reflection of our self-esteem right mm. damn so I, I find that interesting too so it's like yeah for people who who always accept red flags and never are willing to stand up for themselves it's like maybe they just really don't think that they deserve to be treated any more than that with yeah. any decency right <laughs> so at, as, just, on that side it's kind of sad that's yeah and again it, as people like looking at a situation like that or even us like uh, uh, if you're looking at it from the outside it's like y- you don't really have it's not really your right to be the one to change that person no if they're not willing to like maybe it's sad but it, like it might take something serious happen to them emotionally or whatever to actually make the switch <clears throat> yeah to be like hey this is harmful to me yeah this isn't right yeah oh my god oh that's so sad dude mm-hmm. like like i'm not saying like i got my shit together but like we've seen the extremes and that's like you, like, you, can, you almost can't be mad at the person being toxic you're more sad for the person like receiving that because <clears throat> like yeah they're not the ones being toxic but yeah. they're allowing to be res- like they're allowing what's it called they're they're allowing themselves to receive it and that's because of something that's inside not not necessarily like external mm-hmm. fuck and even the people who were like 
are being the ones ta- the are the ones who are being toxic. They also it's have like their they're own. like, oh, this is how this is how it's I s- yeah. how I see people treating other people, and it works for them to get yeah. what they want. So that I'm gonna do the, same. the same thing for that same reason. Yeah. Fuck. Whether that comes out of a place for either party, out of like insecurity or like low self esteem, that's kind of it's kind of interesting. Yeah. That's kind of bleak, dude. Yeah. And it's like not to say that it's your job also to, to try and understand every single person and no, like yeah. let that behavior pass. Oh, no. But like if it's affecting you directly, then I think you have every right to, to be like, m- hey, I'm either going to like try and talk this out with you and see where this is coming from and see if you're willing to change because it's harming me. Yeah. Or uh, if that's not like an option. Not then feasible then. I'm, I'm, gonna I'm done. Take Sorry, a, dude. Yeah. I'm going to do something else that is healthier for yeah. me. Even if that means like taking a step away from you. Yeah. And like uh, both of those options are really big steps. And it's like, oh, so much easier for a lot of people to just, just accept happen. what's happening to them. Right. Yep. Yep. Mm. <sighs> Damn. Yeah. But yeah, dude, you're not the asshole. Oh, yeah. You're not. No. <laughs> Damn, dude. Oh. It's crazy because I was, uh, what's it called? Like driving home. You know what I had with me in the car, right? Like, mm-hmm. did we were like we were talking about some people we knew, and like, like same thing about the relationships. Like about like, like certain people are still together, but are they for the right reasons? Mm-hmm. And it's it's scary yo, because like in our age yo, we're more closer to getting married than to like finding a, a relationship. Because mo- most of us are settled down ish, but now like it's more likely for people to start looking at getting like married than to like break up mm-hmm. because of how long it's been. Mm-hmm. So it's just like that shit's like like in my like what everything that you just said, like I think we've been like implying it on like a like a boyfriend girlfriend situation. Imagine that with like a married couple, and then when you like throw kids in the mix. Mm-hmm. Fuck, dude. And then you sh- throw in like shared, big financial obligations, houses, cars, yeah, mortgage, mortgage, insurance, like kid or kids, like college funds. Yeah. Fuck. It's crazy. That's scary. Oh. <laughs> and like, at that point, it's even harder to like kind of, like even even if you choose to have a conversation and try to like change things, you're so like set into like. Like, you already went through the, like, boyfriend, girlfriend. You already got married. You already settled down. And then, like, to try and, like, change things after all of that. I'm getting goosebumps, yeah. And it's all (laughs) because of the fans on. (laughs) Oh, Oh, yeah. But, yeah, you're not the asshole, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. And and to that girl, uh, thank you, Hint, dude. Yeah. That's tough, man. Sorry it came to that, but yeah. you kind of you kind of forced his no, hand, bro. Yeah, there's no other option after that. You forced his hand. You, and at the same time, like, I respect the hustle, but... Uh, but you gotta... It's a two-way street, yo. Mm-hmm. It's a two-way street. You don't... Do, at the same time, like, uh, uh, you're being kind of overbearing with, you, with the way you're showing love. Mm. Uh, it's commendable, but... Uh, it's towards someone who doesn't feel the same way or doesn't seem to be willing at any near point in the near future either. So, you um, know what I thought of you <laughs> when you said, that. "Do you remember uh, my modeling gig?" You, mm-hmm. yeah, that whole situation. I thought of that too. I guess we explained it already in the podcast. Right? Mm-hmm. I thought it might be the next episode, but yeah, I thought About of, what, like what what happened with the uh, with the um, Brooke, huh? Their modeling gig, yeah. Who's the, the fake the fake modeling gig? Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <They're> not, <laughs> not taking the hit. <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching this, which I don't think you are, but shout to you, shout to you for dealing with my shit. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't start taking pictures and editing photos for the fucking record. Just so you know, I'm not that creepy, but I was a little bit overbearing with my feelings. Mm-hmm. At the same time, indirect, which is like annoying. But mm-hmm. anyway, 
you'll hear that in the other podcast. But mm-hmm. yeah, we did talk about that. You did, yeah, yeah. Oh uh, wait, that's coming out still, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, this one I think the most recent, like the one today because it's Sunday, was the um, friendship breakup one. So then, the, the that's the next one then. I think so. Uh, yeah. So, so it's one. already out. It's already out. I don't have to explain, uh, explain myself. Okay, we're good. <laughs> huh. Yeah, what do you what do you got next on the uh, on the Reddit list? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> you want to read this one? I do. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> All right. So, um, title is: Am I the asshole for telling my mom no for a church thing? Oh, here we go. I, 32 female, have dealt with my mom, 61 female, volunteering me and my things for most of my adult life. If someone reaches out, if someone reaches out to ask for something, she says, I can do it and then text me and then then text, call me. It's not an emergency, but important. Most of the time I just give in and do it, but constantly remind her how much I detest being voluntold to do something. If the person needs something that I can help provide, they can reach out to me themselves. Hmm. Holy shit. Today, I had two missed calls and a text. Call me. Not an emergency, but very important. So I called her back. She told me that the youth pastor was needing another easel for the service that easel for the service that the youth was putting on, and she said that I had one that I could bring. She asked if I would be okay with that, and I said no. This immediately ticked my mom off. It wouldn't hurt you to bring it. I am not dragging it all over the place. It would be a big help to me. It would be a big help to someone else that you could have told to call or text me about it. You don't have, you don't have the right to volunteer my time and my things to other people. Sorry, this was a conversation between the two of them, <clears> but <throat> I think you're tracking. If not, then we'll, we'll go over this after, but... Um, yeah, where I leave off uh, people. Okay, the next part was I think this is the mom's, the mom saying this now. Uh, what about all the things we do for you? For this, she was starting to list off a bill she is helping me pay, and the fact that we went to dinner for my birthday, or lunches that we occasionally get. I help remodel her house. I fix her computer all the time. I clean her house. I do yard work for her, because my dad is unable to. I house it when they are on vacation, which is a lot. That is just listing the few things that I do for them. Uh, you don't get to try. You don't get to try and guilt trip me. The answer is no. Uh, the youth pastor has access to multiple different routes to get an easel. She does production work with one of the schools as well as a community theater. All that would, all that would have a spare easel, which is used to show, used for show postings and such, that she could borrow for the day. I don't want my things damaged or loaned out to people to wait weeks or months to get back. If the youth pastor had texted me, texted me or called me, I might have been inclined to oblige and figure out how to get my easel, which is not a small, which not a smaller collapsible, to and from the church. However, my mom simply said that I would be happy to take it, without asking me beforehand. My sister said that I don't have to readily lend my things if I don't want to. Am I the asshole for putting my foot down? Damn. Mm. I don't think she is. Mm-hmm. What about you? <clears throat> no fucking way, yo. Yeah, there that part where she was like the guilt trip that pissed me off. You know? <laughs> and the specific things she said on the guilt trip, mm-hmm. which were, um, like the leveraging, like the bill she's helping me pay, like that's like gray area, but. Um, the dinner for my birthday, the lunches you you occasionally get, um, and stuff like that. That's just like, dude, you didn't, that wasn't for leverage. You were just spending time with your mom. Yeah. Or spending time with your daughter. Sorry. Yeah. But like, as she leveraged that, you know, mm-hmm. that is just like, that just ruins like birthdays and lunches going forward now. Cause now she's not thinking of it as like, oh, spending time with my mom. She's like, oh. This might be leverage in the future now. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry, this for you, but I think the mom's an asshole, yeah. Yeah, I think the mom's an asshole too. Jesus Christ! 
what's the what's that thing that she was talking about that they wanted to lend? An easel. What is that? It's like um, <clears throat> it's like a thing to hold up like paintings. You ever um, who's that painter that's really popular? Bob uh, Ross. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I was gonna thing- say Picasso. <laughs> Yeah, that's true too, though. <clears throat> but like, it's just like wherever the canvas is being held up, you just paint on that thing, like the wooden wooden triangle thing. With oh, the, yeah, that's an easel. That's an easel. Yeah, uh, it's just like I thought at the first time you said easel, I thought you said D. De- I thought you forgot to say the D in diesel. I was like, <laughs> why does she have diesel? Like, <laughs> you can't go to she, a gas station for that shit. Just, or she got she got gas in the basement <laughs> just for emergencies. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, no. She's... They're not the asshole, yeah. That's like... It's your property. And it's just like... It's not like... You're living with your mom. It's like... So it's not anything shared. Yeah. It's, you're living on your own. Um, You guys both do things for each other. Yeah, but that's... That's not for like... It's not transactional. It's just because you're family. No, yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's the mom who... Decided to make it transactional. transactional, which is like so foul. Yeah, like that's so, that stuff. Yeah, that just ruins everything. Like, just ruins stuff that happens between them now. Mm-hmm. Now it's just like oh, this now is everything leverage. might be transactional. Yeah, like, there's that fear of that. Fuck that. Man. Like once your relationship becomes transactional, it's like that's hard to come back from. Yeah, yeah, like it's like oh, I do this for you, so you have to do this for me. Yeah. Now it's, now it's just like, now I don't want to do anything for you. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, God. Yeah, no, that's a... Oh, that's toxic, yeah. Yeah, like, from the mom's perspective, I can uh, understand that she might be coming from a place of, like, oh, this this place and this the, the church and the staff of the church is some, is some has done a lot for me and my life mm-hmm. and... I want to be willing and able to help and serve back. Exactly. And like not want and and like seeing a need and knowing that you can fulfill that need, but at 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 that at the same time, wanting to be as helpful as you can and like shameful if you can't. So like for her to like get kind of desperate with her daughter. I can see why she would want, why she would desperately turn to making the topic of like what they do for each other transactional. Mm. But at the same time, it's like, dude, it's not, it's not your things that you're leveraging. It's, it's not your time. It's your daughter's. Yeah. Who, whether she is, um, committed as much, it doesn't seem like she is, whether she is or not committed to the same degree that you are, with the with your church, your local church, mm-hmm. it shouldn't matter because it should be her daughter's choice. Like maybe if she was like, "Oh, I know my daughter has an easel. Uh, I I'll ask if she's will she's if she if she's okay with lending it out for a while." Yeah, or like I'm sure the pastor would know the daughter too. Yeah. Like if they like interacted before, it would just be just as easy to be like. Oh, like here's my daughter's contact. Here's the situation. You can talk to her about it, so mm-hmm. you can explain it. Because you're mm-hmm. like the mom didn't have to be there for the middle to be as middleman, you know. Because like she's thirty, like the the daughter was thirty one, and then I'm sure the pastor is like just as old as the mom or something. Mm-hmm. So they could have a mature conversation. So yeah, yeah, I could, yeah. At this, yeah, at the same time, it's like. I could see her and maybe and like just like with most people not having that kind of relationship with the daughter with the daughter Mm. right so I could see that that youth pastor not having that kind of place with the daughter that's oh yeah to To, be able to reach out like that yeah and just take the mom's word for it with because the mom's like more involved or more direct yeah or it's like oh there's gonna be a problem that's gonna be solved um well, leave it up to the Lord, you know. <laughs> so, like, maybe it's like, hey, uh, <sighs> religious, uh, religious expectations, or P 
fear of uh, being shameful for yourself mm-hmm. is like common or common negative aspects to being religious. So I think if if that's what you're if that's what kind of like are things that dictate your life, then I could see why that would be the way you react to the situation. So yeah. I, I I don't think I don't think the daughter is wrong for finally standing up to herself after all of this because like clearly it's the it it this has been something like out of her own wishes and like her own choice to say yes to all of these things that her mom pressured her into doing because she because maybe her herself doesn't want to disappoint her mom yeah because she cares yeah because she cares about her mom she's trying to trying to be there for family yeah but, but you like, can, there's only so much you can take it, like, to take advantage of. Oh, for sure, that, right? And like, there's there's better ways to do that. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just like, like you're still able to like lean on family, but still, like, still make it where it's like, um, it's not forced or like leveraged or anything. It's just like, um, what's it called? Still like giving them the option to like be there, but also like to say no to just so it's not like impeding too much on on the other person's life Mm -hmm. so yeah just because i think the mom just automatically made the decision so it left no room for anything else to happen yeah yeah and obviously you don't want to just come out and just be the asshole and be like nah fuck that Mm -hmm. to like anything right yeah but i think this might this I'm sure changed the dynamic of the relationship for unfortunately the worse. Yeah. Cause now it's like, now I don't want to do anything for you. Yeah. Especially if you're not asking, if you're telling me. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. That's tough. Like I'm an adult who is like pretty much independent and self sustaining. Yeah. She, she doesn't need to be there now. Yeah. Like she, like she can, she'll be fine on her own. Like, all the stuff that she was doing uh, for the sake of just being there, like, lunches and, like, helping out at the house, yo, she doesn't need to do that. Yeah. She can just, she can take herself out to lunch. Mm -hmm. She can work on her own house. Mm -hmm. She doesn't need to be there for you now. Mm -hmm. And now that you've made it, um, because I feel like she's been doing those things because, you know, it's family. Like, love your family. Yeah. But now that that's not for family and for a transaction now if it's just transactional yo the less transactions the better yo Mm -hmm. just like that's fuck (laughs) and even coming from like the mom's perspective is like she should ask herself the question of like was this worth it was me forcing my daughter taking advantage of my daughter's kindness and willingness uh, worth it if it meant that now I have ruined my relationship with my daughter to a pretty significant degree and probably has thrown a little bit of bitterness or salt into my daughter's perspective on who she associates with the church oh yeah right? on top of that too because like not only does it involve her now but her mom involves- but then also like Maybe whoever ha- whoever is in that church who obviously has known her and her family for a while mm-hmm. and can't be completely oblivious to the dynamic with, with that relationship, right? No way. Yeah. So was it worth it? Now you're turning your daughter away from you and, and, the, 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 community, the, church and community. the community that yeah. you wanted her to be a part of, right? All she had to do was just ask and not say yo. yeah she all she had all she had to do was give her the freedom of choice that they boast about the lord giving everybody else right that's easier said than done though <laughs> easier said than done <laughs> you're not the asshole i think that's no no oh <sighs> so that's a sad man yeah oh god Oh. 
Jesus Christ. Have you ever had that dynamic with anyone? Where you're just mm. being told? Yeah. 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 Tough. I think... Um, <clears throat> How did you handle that then? Mm, it probably turned out... It, it turned out the way that, like, I'm sure that the dynamic of this mom and daughter is going. Mm. Like, with people who, like... Especially when if it's, like, church-related over the past couple of years. Um, I think I've... I like to think that I've grown more of a background, a backbone with some people in my life. Yeah. Where like, um, you kind of just, if you're telling me, if you're telling me to do things, uh, you're just going to turn me off more from wanting to do those things. Mm. Like, so no, fuck that. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing this or whatever. But then I don't know at the same time, but like some people, like if, if they were to ask me instead of like telling me, then maybe I would consider it just for them, but not for the sake of um, whether it's like church or whatever. Yeah, it's not at that point. That's just like, oh, it's if if I choose to or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if I think it's it's worth it. Like, yeah, if I think it's worth it. Yeah, and yeah. I think to some degree it's like like unspoken respect after yeah. after like a certain amount of time if people in your life realize that you're not willing to put up with certain shit then there has to be there has to come to a point of understanding for one side for both sides that hey this is my boundary whether it was like set uh like they was talked about or not Mm -hmm. it's a boundary that you have to both acknowledge is there and respect that it's there right yeah yeah. Sometimes it doesn't always end up being in the most. It's not. Sometimes it's not the most healthy process to getting to that point. But regardless, if the end result is that there's a boundary there, yeah, then it should be respected. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So like I that I think for me, uh, I don't always handle setting boundaries in the most healthy way. Mm. But regardless, they're there at the end of the day. Yeah. And if people do the same for me, then I'll do my best to respect, to respect that, that as well yeah mm. I like that yo yeah damn damn alright alright yeah so you're not the asshole dude. you're not the asshole dude <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit is your mom the asshole maybe not intentionally but yes yeah that's true that's <clears throat> that's sad it's kind of sad that it was unintentional because she just had no idea. But regardless of intention, still the asshole, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. Yeah, just because yeah. you didn't mean for it doesn't mean that you get a free pass. Oh, or yeah. Or end up doing something that makes you look like the asshole. Exactly. Oh. That sucks, man, for that, <laughs> that family. Yeah. Fuck. Hmm. What time is it? Should you try one more? Yeah. All right. Uh, <clears throat> All right. Am I the asshole for siding with my 35 year old fiance? Uh, my fiance, who is third, 26 years old. They are uh, 35 years old. Uh, Am I the asshole for siding with my fiance over my daughter after they got into a huge argument? I share custody with my 17-year-old daughter. Uh, She I get every two weeks and she'll come and live with me and my fiance. I work as an ER nurse, so I have a weird, so I have weird shift times. This leaves my fiance and daughter alone together a lot. I thought I'd... I thought I would be, it would be good for them to get some girl time with each other. Uh, I was wrong, and they didn't really get along. Part of me thinks it's her mother's influence because her mother hates my fiancé. Mm. So this situation started Friday night. That morning, she asked, uh, she asked me if she could go out with some friends that night. And I said, sure. Her curfew is 11 p.m., which I don't think is unreasonable for a teenage girl who is 17. 
Uh, she knows this and knows she will be punished if she doesn't sh show at 11. That night, I had to work, so I asked my fiancé to make sure that she was back home safe and sound by 11. Uh, I never had a problem with her missing cur a curfew, so I didn't worry about it. I uh, went home at 8 p.m. and didn't make it home till around... Uh, I went to work at 8 p.m. and didn't make it home till around 9 a.m. When I got home, my fiancé was up and clearly distraught. Uh, she told me that my daughter came back home past curfew, and when she confronted her on it, my daughter lost her temper and went off. After talking to her, I spoke to my daughter, who said she was only a few minutes late and that my girlfriend overreacted uh, and tried to punish her. So typically, I don't like to take sides and just try to find some middle ground between them. But this time, I could actually check everything by looking out uh, looking at our uh, home security cameras. My daughter didn't get home till 1 a.m. Huh. Uh, I, interp I interpreted this as my daughter not being fully truthful, so I asked. So I sided with my partner. I punished my daughter for taking my her car keys and stopping her allowance. Mm. Uh, she and her mother have, uh, in response, both accused me of caring more about my fiance more than my daughter, which isn't true. Am I the asshole? No. <clears throat> I don't think he's the asshole, yeah. Mm. Like, the daughter said one thing, and it turned out to be another thing. So it's just like, okay, dude. Like, now that just makes you look bad. Yeah. And now it's just like everything else you said alongside, like, you saying that you came home yeah, everything else you said now is just like, it just seems like it can't be trusted because mm -hmm. you lied about the time. So now it's just like, now that that now that now that's unwarranted, like that's like, now everything else you said about like, oh, you caring about um, the fiance more, that just won't make sense now. Did, well, no, not, not, that, not that it won't make sense, but now it's just like, why would I listen to that? If you already lied about the time. Mm -hmm. So. <clears throat> Jeez, man. Yeah. <clears throat> it's kind of a. It seems like I, I just want to see what the. I wish there was a little bit more context of. Um, his ex-wife's. Um, dynamic with. Um, mm. <clears throat> him and his fiance. Because he yeah. was saying that like. He already has an idea that his wife hates his. His, his ex-wife hates his fiance. Fiancé, yeah. And I could see why that would influence the dynamic between his daughter and his fiance. Mm. It's like maybe her like seeing that like I also we don't know how long it's been since they divorced and he's decided to move on. Uh, move on. Mm. <clears throat> so that might be a part to play of like why the daughter's been kind of like um bad with his fiance. Mm. At the same time, it's like, um, yes, she shouldn't. The daughter shouldn't have lied about when she came home. Yeah. Like, if you knew you were gonna take it, like, oh, my dad's not gonna be the one waiting for me. Waiting It'll up be for me. It'll be my fiance. His his fiance. Mm. So I'll, I'll take advantage of that. Uh, I won't be as strict with like trying to get home on time as I usually am. And like, who cares? My dad's not gonna be home till like nine a.m. the next day. Yeah. And then I'll just tell him I was only a couple of minutes late. But um, uh, sh that wasn't right for her to lie about that. Yeah. Like maybe be like, yes, I'm sorry. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry, but I'm sorry that I got caught. So I'm not going to lie about it. Yeah. I got home at one. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, the, the husband, the dad, I I don't think I don't mm -hmm. think that dad should have put his fiance in a place where she's she felt like she had to try and oh, punish the daughter. Yeah. Because at the same time, like it's already uh, rocky waters. Yeah. So and he knew and he knows that. Yeah, that's like, true. Don't put your fiance in a position where she has to try and be the parent where the daughter clearly doesn't see her as a parental figure. Yeah. And that would be like salt into the wound. Yeah. Like the daughter's looking at her like looking at the, your fiance like oh you're not my mom mm -hmm. what are you trying to who do the, who the fuck do you think you are mm -hmm. like maybe if anything 
like uh, like I get that the fiance is trying to like be okay with it and like I like trying to be helpful yeah but like maybe if the dad didn't put the expectation of her to be like the, the parent yeah to parent yeah it, to just be like hey uh you're a lot later than you're supposed to be um I'm supposed to tell your dad what time you got home mm-hmm. so but that's it I'm glad you're safe I'm glad you're, you're safe. safe yeah I think that's that's Good what should have happened yeah um but I have to tell your dad yeah like I think that should have been the expectation. Yeah. Like Word whether that. there was a miscommunication there with the between the dad and the fiance and his fiance mm-hmm. of like, oh, just make sure she's home. Don't try to Don't try to be a, the mom. Because yeah. you're not. Yeah, you're not. That's just not your place. So yeah. I think out of this whole situation, I think the fiance is the only one in the right. The, the yeah. I think it was the dad's fault that like he shouldn't have put her put his fiance in that position. In that position. Yeah. Um at the same time. Uh, the daughter shouldn't have shouldn't have lied. Yeah, and, and like clearly his ex hates them, so that yeah. doesn't so now that's influence just... the relationship with the daughter and his fiance any better. Right? No, mm, yeah, just so, like that's tough. Like you're trying to introduce yourself. Like it's not her fault that she fell in love with um with the dad mm-hmm. at the time that they did. Yeah, um, she could. The fiance couldn't have known unless they were friends beforehand. Yeah, that it was whether it's too soon or long enough for them to get together. Yeah, and I don't think she's at fault in this. No, daughter shouldn't have lied. Mm, His ex-wife yeah. should not be so. I mean, I guess she can't help being influential, but then, like, yeah. why are you trying to? Why are you so influential that it's almost sabotaging that that real that potential relationship? Mm-hmm. Isn't it to like everybody's best interest? Like, maybe the ex wife thinks that like she doesn't want to see her ex husband happy at all, so like oh, I'm gonna sabotage this. Mm. But like, I think it's to everybody's benefit that this relationship works out. Because yeah. clearly you guys divorced for a reason. It's not like you want to get back with your ex-husband. Yeah. It's like, I think it's to everybody's best interest, whether you're hurt or not, that it works to either out. be like neutral to the situation yeah. or try and make it work. Mm-hmm. Because like, if there's just like bad blood, then like there's also a, a kid in the dynamic, mm-hmm. right? And that. A that, young kid. She's young, only 17. Yeah. So she's going to be affected by that um, regardless. Yeah. Not to mention that's how, like, those two relationships is how she's going to see relationships, relationships growing yeah, up. Yeah, that's tough. If she's not already in a relationship, right? That's just going <clears> to... <throat> she's going to see, like, more of the dark, like, the worst of it then the potential of like how good it could be Mm -hmm. yeah and not to say that the daughter can't look at this and turn it around for him herself oh no of course but again like but again it's easier to be monkey see monkey do right so Mm. damn so is he the asshole um no but i think i think things should have been done better yeah yeah, and yeah. Props to the fiance for trying. Mm-hmm. Like she was only trying to to do what uh, he asked, and she was only trying to make sure that he, like she she still made sure that she got home. Mm-hmm. The daughter, like, and she wasn't trying to punish her out of spite. It was just like, look, you came. Yeah, she was probably like rethinking how she could have done the whole situation for sure because he said she was up. And seemed distraught <clears throat> when he got home. Mm. So she's clearly like stressed out and anxious about how, how the situation went, went yeah. how she dealt with it, how things could have changed, which and is how the husband, how her fiance will react. Which is like props to her because that means she cares. Yeah. Like it could have been like she tried to punish her, then he comes home and she's she's already like like dead set on like yeah your daughter's a bitch, mm-hmm. but no she was like oh distraught Mm -hmm. so yeah i think the conclusion is the fiance is not the asshole no 
Everyone else is in your Everybody area. else is. Yeah. yeah. Arguably ass. asshole, arguably just butt hurt. Yeah. <laughs> mm. That's a good explanation. Oh, shit. Both butt related, asshole and, and butt hurt. <laughs> I like that. I like that. So just ass. Just ass. <laughs> just ass. Feeling or being ass. <laughs> Oh man. Damn. Shit. I don't know if you have anything else to add to that. That that yeah, I think you explained it and pretty pretty good there. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, no, that's all I have to add to that. Yeah. Damn. Parenting's a hard thing, man. Yeah. Complicated. Yeah. Changes in relationships. That's a lot to take into. Especially coming from like broken homes. Oh, yeah. It's a slippery, it's a slippery Very slope. Slippery yo. slope. Then with kids in the mix, yo. Mm-hmm. Whether you're the parent or you're the partner coming into the, the family dynamic mm-hmm. or you're the child. It's all, it's, it's all hard if there's not enough like communication or consideration for each other right yeah Hmm. yeah fuck sorry I was like thinking I don't even know where my head was at (laughs) shit well speaking of uh, lack of uh, consideration for emotions Mm. um uh can you give us uh, your thoughts on The Last of Us? Because you finally caught up. Yeah. Uh, we're currently at the time of recording. Uh, we're waiting on episode seven to release. Mm. So um, if you haven't watched up to episode six of The Last of Us on HBO slash Crave. Uh, spoiler alert. Yeah. Your fault. Yeah. You're missing out. I don't give a <laughs> shit. Oh, my God, dude. This show is like it's ah uh, it's so good at like it's so well it's I like it's so well put together it's so like smart how they're doing things it's like it could like on it like literally the 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 premise is like oh zombie apocalypse survive mm-hmm. that's it that's really it but. You're somehow like it. It's so it's so good at it, you getting getting you to connect with the characters to to like understand like their how these characters work and you like caring about them and seeing them react to certain situations. You going like oh fuck, like this makes sense why they're acting this way and like like you feel for them when they see certain things. Oh my god, I, ugh. So good, James. Fucking, um, what's it called? Papa Pedro. Oh, Papi, yo, Papi. <laughs> Is that what he called? No, he says he called him Daddy. Yeah, he called himself Daddy. Daddy, Daddy Pedro, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, he's so. Ah, uh, this like, it's it's so good at like really, really sticking with how the characters are built. Because then sometimes they'll have moments where, um like something like shifts or something changes like after the first episode where his daughter is I'm, i don't care about spoiling i'm, I'm just no, saying, no yeah, yeah spoiler warning already oh yeah you're right when his daughter is shot mm-hmm. like by um guard sorry i mean by the government soldier the government the soldier military. it's just like like you you don't really see that much of him in the first episode but you see enough to where he you know he loves his daughter you know he cares like um like he's like you can see like a cert like he's kind of like still kind of like to himself a little bit stoic but um you you see like the softer side with his daughter that his daughter gets shot and all then it goes straight to like oh, when they're in the QZ mm-hmm. and you just like and this again it's just the first episode mm-hmm. and then you you see how hardened he is how stoic he is like the the first thing you see him doing after like from that time the contrast is like 
when that kid comes to the QZ infected mm -hmm. and then they get rid of the body like uh Tess couldn't do it and then you uh shifts over to, to Joel Pedro Poppy Pedro mm -hmm. and then super easily just like takes the body dumps it mm -hmm. and it's just like oh fuck like <laughs> the shift there and you're just like oh <laughs> like I didn't I didn't I didn't realize it when we watched we watched the first episode together but mm -hmm. I didn't realize when we watched it I thought of it when I got home I'm just like fuck <laughs> <laughs> dude but like it's just like moments like that but it's like it's happened like every episode you know? mm -hmm. and it's just like oh my god like um dude like even do you remember when like I think for like the first few episodes he's like taking care of L but he's just as hard as Ellie Ellie yeah, yeah sorry not L um Ellie and he's like fucking like super serious super stoic just like just get the job done like no shame he's just like he's like shot up zombies shot up like raiders and then like just hardened and he does like doesn't give any information out just like only talks about what needs to be done that's it and then like you like the episodes go on and then you you see him kind of like opening up a little bit some walls are coming down mm -hmm. um there's that one thing where they're sleeping and then the fucking dad jokes and you hear him laugh yeah for the first time in a very long time the, yeah very Who long knows, time. maybe 20 years i don't know could have been yo could have been and like you like the entire like for the first like four episodes you never see this guy smile mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you hear him laugh and you're like <sighs> you're like oh shit <laughs> All right, I swear, like, I'm tearing up I'm tearing up right now I'm like holy fuck like why he's just laughing why does mm -hmm. this mean so much to me but they they set up so well to where like Pedro laughs you start crying mm -hmm. and I'm like oh fuck this is it's that type of show guys yeah uh, and like sorry I'm one more thing but it's just like um this show like no fear and like just, uh, you know, mm -hmm. just, just so good at it. So good at it. Bill and Frank make you fall in love with this couple. Then they like fucking, it's so beautiful. 10 years, like fuck was it 10, 10 years after MS or like he looks like he has like MS or something. Mm -hmm. Like he can't, he's in a wheelchair. Um, clearly going to die. Um, and then, um, I forgot who is Bill and who's Frank. Uh, was Bill? Bill is Nick Offerman. Yeah. Bill. Bill is the, is um the prepper. Prepper. Yeah. Frank is the pianist. Pianist. <laughs> uh, I mean, they're both pianists, but like. Oh, that's he's true. There. But yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. I got you. Um. Yeah, but yeah, dude. Even that dynamic, you see this, like, you see it again. This hardened like prepper, doomsday prepper, like. Um, he was ready to just take care of himself. Mm -hmm. I mean, meets meets Frank, and it's just like you you see like a a human side of him that like like you actually like fucking when you see Bill, you don't you don't you don't automatically think that he's he's gay, mm -hmm. and then like you like there's nothing that hinted towards it. Like he's a, like there's nothing that you would have seen before frank that would have like shown that he was gay right so it's mm -hmm. just like um i almost want to say this it's like that could have been like something that he kept to himself or suppressed mm -hmm. but finally he was able to like let that flourish yeah and it was so it was so beautiful because you just saw this like dude, it was literally like you saw bill for like 10 15 minutes of the episode and you already kind of like made your assumption about this guy oh yeah and then like the show like shifts that dynamic and you see like a very like hum like beautiful humane more humane side well not more humane but you see another side of him that like like was hidden but clearly passionate about mm -hmm. and it's just like oh yeah uh i because there's a podcast um that they do um every week after mm -hmm. the day after the episodes release oh okay by hbo so like if you look up hbo max uh the last of us podcast yeah it's um hosted by the troy baker he's the voice actor for joel in the game oh and then he reg regularly has um neil Druckmann 
yeah. and uh, Craig Mazin, who are the b- two uh, creators of the of the show. So Craig Mazin is like the director for like the most uh, notable thing he's filmed is the series Chernobyl, which is also on uh, on uh, Crave, which is also really good. If you yeah. guys haven't watched is it, that you guys the, should watch that. Is that the one the you one were that talking th- about when we were having IGI? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you watch it yet? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. It's so good. I gotta watch it. Yeah, it covers like the 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 nuclear reactor uh, exploding or yeah. like breaking down in uh, Kiev. Oh, shit. Is it like a show or documentary or? It's a, it's a show. Okay. Oh, but like shit. it's almost like told in like uh, uh it's kind of told so um, well that it's like you'd believe it's a documentary. Oh. But yeah, but it follows like different characters and like what they were doing before, during, and after Interesting. the events. Oh, shit. Yeah, but Craig Mason, he directed that one. And, and Neil Druckmann, he's the creator of the games. Yeah. So uh, Troy Baker, the voice for Joel, has like both of them on regularly and they break down and talk about like different choices that they made that like ways they've changed or deviated from the game Mm. or and like why it worked and why they made those choices to cut or change right yeah and um with um bill and frank um neil Druckmann was saying uh how uh for bill um he was uh, he w- he's grown into becoming a hardened uh, doomsday prepper because he's survived he's tr- he's learned to try and survive in a world w- that wouldn't accept him for who he was so like his oh. biggest thing is like protecting himself like self preservation that's yeah. why he was so hardcore into, into prepping. doomsday prepping yeah and not appearing to be Whatever as stereotypically gay as oh. people would think and then finally when he's allowed himself when he's f- survived the initial apocalypse and is thriving yeah he's he's living his life mm-hmm. and he's able to be himself without the judgment of anybody else mm. but then when he finally sees someone when he sees a frank in his in his trap hole and he allows himself to be vulnerable and open and accept love into his life he finally has something to be scared of and if and i thought that was like so interesting like that line that they have a dialogue when they were eating the strawberries and like he was like laughing like a schoolgirl, yeah. which was funny yeah and he was like you know i've never been afraid of anything until i had you uh, he was like never scared of anything he didn't he didn't care. He thought he could handle himself, but now that there's now there's, there's a stake in something the something to in lose there, now. Now he's scared. Oh shit! And it's pretty cute, you know that that, that episode, and like it's crazy that like um, I've been seeing some people uh, who are like more conservative, like always point uh, point out with this is like oh this is just like a random. Um, a uh, gay story that they threw into here that for like inclusion really, or whatever yeah for inclusion or to meet a quota yeah. just because like uh, you want to be more woke or whatever right I didn't I didn't feel it with with this episode yeah yeah and like, a lot of people like, like who like say that they they haven't uh, played the games no and like in the games they allude to um, the relationship being more than just uh, friends like because yeah. in the game. Um, you meet up with Bill, um, and he helps you get a car, a battery for a truck. And Joel's like, "Oh, you owe me." So then they help each other out, and then they run into a house where Frank was, and you find a note. And he's like, uh, "He Frank is talking about like, um, you're like unbearable to live with, and like I'd rather uh, take my chances out here than have to live another day with you." And there's like, and you walk into that uh, specific room of the house, and he's, uh, he said he in the note he says he got infected, and he instead of turning he hung himself. Oh fuck! Like in a garage or something. Yeah. So then you, it's like they, they change this so that it would be a happier ending, and and you still progress in the story because you get a truck. Like yeah. that massively progresses the story of like how their mode of transportation goes about. 
it's like for people to think that like oh um you guys can't you guys can't do this it's like uh, untasteful or whatever it was like you we you don't want people who think that way don't want um uh stories to be switched out characters to be switched out to be like whatever gender or whatever uh, ethnicity right mm-hmm. but then when stories are written for that demographic like i mean not like like with characters of that demographic whether it's whatever sexuality or, or whatever ethnicity that isn't just the norm which is like straight and like heterosexual white or yeah, her whatever or, yeah like just because it's not that just because a sto- a great story is written around those kinds of characters those kind of people uh, then they get mad that it's like, like, dude, like we're not, they're not changing characters uh, that didn't already exist in mm-hmm. the way that they're already portrayed. Yeah. So it's like at that point, it's like it's, you're just a you're just a fucking hater, dude. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Like you want compelling stories with characters of diversity, mm-hmm. without it feeling forced. But then when stories are presented to you that are written beautifully. Then yep. you're like, oh, this is forced. Like, bro, what? They're just, they're just people that are never happy. Mm-hmm. There's, yeah. If, if it's it, like, oh, this is uh, too, this is too much for me, right? They're all like, oh, this is too, uh, too progressive, too, um, too. This makes me feel uncomfortable. Well, like, well, you don't have to. Like, you don't have to watch. You don't. Yeah. Like it's no one's there's no gun to your head. No. Just play the next episode if you're that uncomfortable, yeah. Mm-hmm. If you're uncomfortable with like seeing um minority groups, whether it's people of color or people up in the queer community mm-hmm. being given stories and representations in beautiful ways that aren't just that stereotypical. Aren't, that aren't for us and aren't there for quota. It like it didn't even feel like that. No. No. Like it's literally like a was, beautiful love story. Yeah. That shows people who like despite them uh dying. Yeah. Were able to live a long and fulfilling life. Yeah. In like the most dire state of humanity. Yeah. And it it, it yeah, it it's still the that story still made like contributions to like the whole show mm-hmm. like it wasn't like oh like a random just like oh yeah here's a gay couple no like they're they're connected it made sense like yeah. it didn't we already we already knew that um joel tess and ellie were trying to get to bill and frank's yeah and this shows what was happening of why the 80s music was playing which meant trouble ahead yeah mm. and now we get context of their character backgrounds with each other yeah. and what was happening leading up to them trying to send that signal to, to, to Joel, Joel and Joel Tess, Tess yeah. beforehand. Mm. Yep. Oh. <sighs> this show, man. Uh, yeah, sorry. and then right hey. after that, the back-to-back episodes showing the two perspectives of like... Uh, Joel and Ellie, and then Sam and Henry. Mm. That was cool, dude. Um, oh, how Sam and Henry went out? <laughs> Fuck, dude. That that I had, I had to like after that episode. I had to like just stop, and I like sat there. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, fuck. Like Sam was a kid, right? Mm-hmm. In um, in the show, they made him like like I think two or three years younger than he is in the game, and in the game he's not deaf. Oh, okay. But then, uh, in the in the Last of Us podcast, um, um, I forgot if it was Craig or Nick, but then one of them was saying that like, um, how how could we take this and make it like different in like a good way that works. Mm. I was like making him making um Sam uh making Sam deaf made like the scenes more intimate. Oh, more I intimate get, and like yeah. um more vulnerable because like oh how could you have survived this long with uh with a young kid like that but, yeah. and being able to stay quiet. Well like oh he was deaf. Mm. And like seeing the seeing that and like adding on his like leukemia 
is like interesting for as like for Henry, it's like I have to protect my my little brother. Yeah. And like literally without his brother, um, without uh, without without Sam, he like that that like that's his purpose. Just like how Bill's purpose was protecting Frank. Just like how now Joel's purpose it's is protecting not protecting Ellie. Ellie. Yeah. And whether it's like through these both of these two relationships, uh, Joel is now seeing himself uh, caring about Ellie, Ellie. and like yeah. doing fatherly things like even even something as little as like burying um, Sam and Henry like that was arguably just as much for Ellie as it was for himself yeah because usually like back then he, <clears throat> he would just leave the body yeah he wouldn't give a shit right yeah so like that's interesting yeah I think um, also Henry like him not being able to knowing no us knowing that he's never been violent before. I was gonna say yo, and the first the person, first person he, he has kills to kill is his brother. Yeah, I was like, boom! It's like what I do, dude. Yeah, yeah. I was just like, you're, you're just you're just there like, <laughs> what did I do? What did I, I do? Cry, dude. That's <laughs> gonna cry. Yeah, he. That's all he says, right? Yeah. And then, what I do. What did I do? And then, Henry, 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 Henry. Boom! Damn. Oh, uh, and El had to wa- Ellie had to watch that. Mm-hmm. Like, and like, mind you, she's still a kid, and you can, you can see in those different, um, because there's another scene too where she's behind the wall and she hears Joel, Joel shoot, sh- stab shoot, the dude, stab the dude, and then you can kind of like see her like reaction. Mm-hmm. That's just like. And it's like a reminder, like, oh, shit, she's a kid. Yeah. And it's just like, you can see, like, it, like, all of this whole situation, like, imprinting on her. Yeah. And, like, like, she's not, it's, she knows that that had to happen, but she wasn't ready to be a part of that. Yeah. Even though she had to shoot him, she didn't want to be the one to get the finishing blow. Yeah. (sighs) Fuck, dude. And it was, like, obviously poetic justice that, like, the the le- the woman leader who was so hell bent on revenge and like when she told uh Henry when he was like just let the kids go and then she was like uh no um why why does kids die every day Henry Henry mm. uh, why 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 do they deserve why why does one person's life deserve more than another like my brothers and like for that like uh, for her to die by that child clicker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's what you get, yo. Yeah. Yeah, kids die every day, yo. So you're going to die by that, by you're a kid. By a kid, yeah. Whether it was a result of your choice or not. Mm. I mean, it, like, her being in that situation was her choice. Because the, um, her right hand man is, um, the voice, as actually they said, is the voice actor for Tommy in the games. Oh, shit. Yeah. And, um, in that point when he tells it when he holds off the bloater she had a choice she had the chance to run away but because she was still hell after bent. all of that hell bent on revenge she, she got herself she into there. that situation yeah, she, that's all on her yeah. she could have let them she could have let it go yeah she clearly lost so much and now that qz is going to be overrun with years dozens worth of uh infected yeah I don't also think that, anyone that, knows, that eh? infected that infected scene with the horde, yo. That, that was, was crazy. crazy. Like the whole thing sank, <laughs> and all of a sudden, like a whole. Because in the game, like um, um, when they go through the sewers, that's where all the infected are. Like they were saying, yeah. But then I guess that section was cleared, and good, good. Because like I was expecting it. Mm. I was expecting. I was like, oh shit. Shit, what's gonna happen, yeah, yo? I I wasn't, and I was I was still scared, y'all. It's just like, oh my god, like this is sketch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, fuck, dude. <laughs> and when Henry was like, uh, "See, it's cleared," and then Joel's like, "We've been down here for all of two seconds." <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I was just when he said that, yeah, I was just like, something's gonna happen, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's gonna happen. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, I had a feeling when they were under the the car, I was like, yo, 
There's no way all of that grabbing and all of those that you're not infected faces so that no one scratched up or or bit in you. Mm-hmm. Oh, it oh dude, when oh, Ellie tried to like like try to try yeah. to do the thing, yeah. Like it's like uh, of course it wouldn't it's, work, but yeah. then like but I could it, see why the desperate chance was like oh maybe it will work. Yeah. Oh my god. And like, even like when uh, he wrote like uh, when you turn into when you turn our to a monster is there still you inside um they said uh in the podcast that it was like a small detail but like when she woke up and he was just sitting there um uh they say that there's a timeline of when how long it takes for your you to really not have control Mm -hmm. because like clearly he was still sam because like unlike the uh Mrs. Adler in the very first episode who within like a couple hours yeah, she turned completely and she was disabled and mm-hmm. then she was able bodied. Yeah. And then Sam was still deaf. Yeah. Whereas he should have been not deaf like right off the bat, right? Mm. So like and the way they described it is like it the cordyceps doesn't take over your mind. Yeah. It just takes over the part of your brain that controls your body. Oh. So like there is still you inside. Yeah, but you have you have no control, control. of what you're doing. Oh, that's fucked it's up. It's like how crazy, how scary that is for like Sam to be like, uh, I have these cravings. Yeah. I, ha- I have this instinctual feeling to have to like kill, hunt, and spread. Yeah. And like and you have no turning say. having that stimulus to be turned to Ellie. And then you have no control of what you're doing, but you see yourself attacking the one kid that you've gone along with for, like, who knows how long. It's, like, pretty sad. Fuck. And, like, it was nice of them to give us, like, kind of, like, a breath uh, to relax uh, yeah. in the episode after. Like, with that that indigenous couple yeah. in the cabin. <laughs> <Yeah>. So, <laughs> jokes, so yo. jokes, yo. Did you make her soup? Did you make him soup? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why didn't you shoot him? The gun's all the way over there. <laughs> and the truth, when they were doing the map thing, she's like, he was like, did you tell him the truth? She's like, yeah. Yeah. Are you telling me the truth? He's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that, man. I saw someone on uh, Instagram um, saying, we need a... Uh, a spin-off series with just the two of them I and would. then name the series just the two of us <laughs> <laughs> dude yo is there a petition I'm signing that right now yeah that's fucking oh my god that'd be so jokes that would be so jokes <laughs> holy shit oh oh my god did your phone die? I think so <laughs> <laughs> I guess it has been an hour twenty eight minutes, yeah. Oh it hit the twenty percent battery mark, yeah. Oh. Then it turned it off. But I still have memory, so oh. You still have space? Oh yeah. <laughs> it's okay, I'll just do what I did with the it happened with um, with the deconstructed episode. episode. Yeah, it was um, what's it called? I didn't even press. Re- I didn't even press record. <laughs> it's a dumbass. We're still recording on here though. Oh yeah, we're still recording. Okay. But yeah, The Last of Us. Uh, I think uh, I'm excited where for where it's going because. Uh, like, if I'm remembering it correctly, we're at, like, the last, if I had to put, like, a percentage number, maybe, like, last 20, 25% of the mm-hmm. game. And I think, like, this epi- this series only is supposed to have, like, nine episodes, yeah. right? So, I'm right oh. on episode seven. Oh, shit. I might think maybe I am out of memory. Hold on. <laughs> Out of memory? Yeah. That's okay. 
Uh, we can we can end it audioly. We'll end it audioly, yeah. I was gonna say Spotify listeners are uh, are not losing out, but then I just I, I remembered that we're doing video, on, video Spotify on Spotify too. too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess everyone's just gonna have the audio, so yeah, for the end. For the end, yeah. Um, honestly, I'm not done talking about The Last of Us, and there's another episode coming out tonight, so. <laughs> I mean, we can talk about it again next, we next should. time. We, we really should. For sure. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm. Yeah, one thing I want to point out about the episode six is mm-hmm. that, like, um, <clears throat> in the in the game, uh, you love Joel, but then you may, he, the character makes it so hard for you to be, like, uh, to side with him. Because, mm-hmm. like, a lot of the time you're like, dude, why are you being an asshole, yo? And, but then I liked how in in this version when he's like talking to tommy that conversation in the game yeah is a lot more um aggressive mm. and like oh joel you're just straight up an asshole and like here still um he did have moments of being an asshole but then i love that they brought um a sense of uh, vulnerability yeah and like a a, a a form of their of um masculinity that is more self-realized because for Joel to take that step to be, to be, uh, the second time they talk, of course, not mm-hmm. the first time, because the first time he lied through his teeth <laughs> and wasn't happy for his brother. Yeah. Um, and for, uh, I mean, obviously the second time they talked and Tommy was, took that first step to be like, Hey, I know it's been hard for you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean, I know you, you're happy for me. Mm-hmm. It's just hard for you to be happy for me. And like, I love that he was able to, that they were both able to self realize that mm. and he, because Joel's not very vocal like that. No. And then for Joel to be vulnerable enough to see his brother to be so much more understanding and growing and has grown over these years. And then for Joel to go back and like return that vulnerability and honesty with his own vulnerability and honesty to be like, hey, I don't think I'm enough anymore for jo- for Ellie. And seeing <sighs> that dynamic of like hey i know that you have a whole life set up in front of you yeah. but i'm scared i'm gonna fail mm, like despite yeah. of how many things he's done right <clears throat> like him to think i failed with sarah i failed with tess oh. and there i'll be damned if i fail again with, with ellie. ellie and then that conversation he has with ellie after he realized that ellie was listening in he's like uh she was like uh why the fuck are you still here? If you're going to ditch me, then just ditch me. And then he's like this. Uh, and then she was like, do you care about me? Do you give a shit about me or not? And he was like, yeah, of course. And that, and like, uh, them starting to argue and her being, her throwing in like, I, you know, I'm not her, you know, Maria told me about Sarah. And then he's like, Ooh, <gasps> not another word, dude. Oh, and then she's like, you know, I've lost people too. And then he's like, you don't know if, you don't know a fucking thing about what loss is. And then she was like, everybody that I've ever cared for has either died or left me. Everyone except for fucking you. And then I, that part got me. I was like, Ooh. so don't tell me, don't tell me that uh, I'll be better off with someone else because the truth is I'll just be more scared. And like, that's like shot for shot. What the, what, what that conversation was in the game. I'm like, damn, you guys are killing it, yo. Oh, you guys are killing so it, yo. fucking good. So good, yeah. And, like, one thing, like, I, 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 I uh, wasn't uh, clear about in the game was that, um, I mean, in the show was, like, uh, why did initially Joel was, like, hey, we can, if we do this together, this will be no problem to take Ellie there. But then it kind of changed to him being so afraid of like losing someone again that he decided to abandon her and not do mm-hmm. it together with Tommy, even though they'd have a better chance together. Yeah. Like he just turned off that idea and just been, and was just decided that it would just be Tommy and, Tommy and Ellie. And Ellie. Yeah. And like, sure. They could have also went the three of them mm-hmm. and that would have been better. But then like, it was nice of him to realize that Ellie should have a say in, in, in her destiny. Yeah. 
Oh, for sure. Yeah. And like, I think that that like dynamic of like giving her the choice is something that's going to be very, I know is going to be very important down the line with like knowing how the game is and like how they're going to adapt all of this in the next three episodes. Oh, oh man. I think I, I might look into like how, how the game plays out. <laughs> There's full HD walkthroughs of the game. That's like only the cinematic parts. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think I might, I might, I think I want to. <laughs> <Yo>. <laughs> what? Uh, I don't know if you're ready, yo. Oh no, Jay. I don't know if you're ready, yo. If Pedro dies, yo. If, Pe- if, if Poppy Pedro dies, yo. I'm gonna cry, yo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna cry right now. I can tell you one thing. I. Because that's way too much that they'd have to cover in the next three episodes. So I don't think Pedro... Poppy's... Actually, poppies. I think Poppy will be alive. Maybe. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to confirm nor deny that he died, that he's alive or dead. Or that he ever dies. I'm spiraling. But I think by the end of episode nine, he won't be dead. Not that he's going to die. I'm spiraling. I think we should... <laughs> we're just going to watch tonight's episode, yeah. Oh, fuck. Okay. Well, if you made it to the end of this... Uh, made it this far into the episode. episode. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank As, you even, even though there is no... Um, Video at the end of it? Yeah. Well, we'll figure something out. Yeah, thank you for tuning in to this episode of... Uh, the just the two of us. Just the two, <laughs> <laughs> just the two of us. Yeah. Oh man, we should have got Janice to sing "Just the Two of Us." For us <laughs> yeah, I know, right? That'd been hilarious. <laughs> we'll have a, a dedicated uh, "The Last of Us" episode. Yeah. <laughs> I I need or should we wait till like the end, like in a couple of weeks to talk about it again? To talk about it yeah, again. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I feel like I'm going to talk about it next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Yeah, this if if you if you haven't watched already, this is your sign. Uh, watch to watch, watch it. The last yeah, list. just just do it. Yeah, just fucking do it. Whether you're streaming it illegally or you're uh, watching it on the Crave uh. app, if you're in Canada or HBO Max, wherever you are. Hmm. Yeah. <sighs> Fuck. Oh, until then. Until then. Endure and survive. Endure and survive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh fuck! I want to talk about it more, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go another hour, yo. And there's something I I just remember when he said that. The, 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 oh, okay, okay, we gotta stop. We gotta stop. Okay, bye guys. Blasting right. off now. Peace, <laughs> peace. I looked at the camera. This is off, yo. <laughs>